so uh, this one is the uh, preparation uh, for Jacob's stick and mainly advertise uh, advertisement for him on twenty a which is next week Monday right so and he will talk about uh, a thing maybe guessing from his abstract form uh, uh, from his colloquium probably the two things here so on the billion geometry and the uh, ABC conjecture so this one actually is the uh, first uh, introduced by Dick. And today we will not say anything about this one actually, but I will mention briefly about what is ABC conjecture and some some uh, consequence of uh, that conjecture. So before we go to the main thing, so let me define what is the curve look like. Uh, so curve. And again, I just mainly, uh, I mean, talk over Q, so I suppose everybody know Q. It's just a rational number. And for, I mean, for even general field and Q, it's, act, it's similar behavior, so it doesn't matter. So a curve uh, over Q is of the form or defined by the form where you have f x y equals zero and where f x y is polynomial in two variables x and y and here what I mean in two variables x and y that means the, the, those things here independent okay? they cannot depend on each other algebraically so for example you have uh, a very basic curve uh, everybody know is circle <coughs> and you can define say fxy equal to x squared plus y squared minus one and then the circle uh, you can define using this equation saying is of the form or define by the equation f x y equal x squared plus y squared minus one equals zero. Okay. So the main thing in number theory is the uh, we don't care any other point except rational point. Rational point that means uh, the point on the curve where the x y coordinate come from the rational number. Okay. Because all the I mean all, all the or the point with the coordinate, for example, real number are not interesting enough. So the first guy actually interesting in those things is uh, Jean Fantas. He lived around the third century and he left like, uh, he wrote 13 book called Arithmetica. But only 10 books is, uh, still survive. The three books, we lost three books. And you will see amazing, I will, I will at some time in the talk, I will mention one of his actually, his curve. And you will see amazingly actually, it's very modern, up to this century as well. So, again, the main interesting point here, the main goal, one of the main goals actually, cannot say, the main theme. of number theory uh, to find fractional point on curve. Again, curve needs to be defined with Q so that you can find fractional point. And once again, rational point, that means the point where uh, x, y, both of them are rational number. For example, we come back to our uh, for example, here you will see it if you define. Let me come back here. So say x square plus y square equal minus one equals zero here. And if you 
uh, that alpha, beta. It's anything is the uh, in z. Here z that means it's the integers. <coughs> and I apply, let me set off the x uh, equal to, let's see what we have here. Uh, 2 alpha beta and alpha square beta square. So this one, of course, because alpha beta, both of them in Z. And one more thing is, I don't want it uh, in zero. So because I don't want it here, Z divided by, by zero here. So again, the area is uh, 2 alpha beta, which is in Z. Alpha square, beta square, both in Z. So when you square up, you add them together in Z as well. And when it gets Gaussian, it gets back to the to the Q. So the first point is fine. So the X cos and it comes from the directional point. And the second one I want to set up is the uh, you have alpha square minus beta square and divide by the same quotient. Again, this one you can see is the, the top and the bottom, both in Z. So the whole thing here should be in Q. Now it's just a matter of calculation. You can see that actually this is defined as equation. So we have, uh, if you are uh, using this equation there, with alpha and beta arbitrary integers non-zero, you have x squared plus y squared minus 1. And I can do simply, I mean, I can simplify here, you have 2 alpha beta alpha squared, and you square off here. And we have one more thing here. It's the difference between alpha square beta square with the same quotient there. And you square up, you got minus one. So that means the whole thing here, uh, the bottom should be alpha square plus beta square. And you square up. All right. So the top here, you see it here become <coughs> four alpha square beta square. And this one, when you expand the square out, you got there just alpha 4 plus beta 4 minus alpha square beta square. And the red is just similar to the, to the quotient there, so which is, we have here just alpha square beta square square. Out. And now it's just the, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, it's a bit two here. So 4 here with 2 there, cancel out, you left 2. And when you look at the first two terms from here to there, you got back to actually this same, uh, this same quantity as well. So that means the whole thing here actually equals zero, which is uh, prove that the x y actually satisfy uh, the equation equation of the the unit circle, and which is prove that you have the point x y where x y at coordinate, if I using the alpha and beta, we have two alpha beta, alpha square plus beta square, and the second one, uh, alpha square minus beta square, where alpha square belong, belong to the curve here. So let me see here. So you say actually this one belongs to the C, and you try with the Q there. So when they when I write out the name for the curve, say C and then two dot, and with the equation equals zero, that means this is my curve, C, okay? And when I write out the C, chart with the curve, the Q there, this one means the definition, it's just the set of all rational points. On uh, C. And again, I'm not interested into the uh, into the real point. The real point that means the x you can check actually it's a real number. It's a real real number because that's easy, right? For example, you can move around thing here. You move x squared and minus one the other side. You check the square root. You got a real number for sure, which is only one step. You can get the whole thing. But in the Q, this one actually it's not come natural. They have some method to get the form of the solution look like this form. But I'm not talking about it. So, this one is a very, very simple one. <coughs> I 
So when you uh, look at the curve of a C again, now we look at mainly this is the uh, where now I have C and F x y equals zero. So sometimes I don't want to work using the uh, this equation, right? Because here actually sometimes you call this one is a phi equation of the curve. For several reasons, it's, this one is not perfectly to work with. Right? Because they're missing the point at infinity. So, so they want to transform the curve as equivalent form where this equation where you actually you can define in rejective space. And have you ever heard about rejective space before? So let me briefly uh, define it. So if you take a look at the, um, uh, again, just skill start with. And for any other, other field, exactly the same way I define. So I want to define something called the uh, uh, rejective two space. And notation for this one is, and the B2 over Q there. So when I say B2 here, that means this one should be the object of two dimensional. And the definition, the formula, so we will have, so I, I look at the, the set Q3 to start with. So Q3, that means you take the product of Q three times. And a general point have this form. X, Y, and Z <coughs> belong to the Q3, where of course it goes in a here actually a rational number, right? So then I define the B2 actually all the collection of the point. Where you have, uh, I didn't know by the square bracket here, x and two dot y, two dot z. This one belongs to q of three as well. But here I can see the many points they have equal to each other using one uh, equivalent relation. Here, where I can see that the. the uh, uh, let's see, actually, no, uh, I can ignore this one, doesn't matter, sorry. So, I don't need to talk about this one. Where, if the two point, if you have the x, y, and z, and the other one is, if you multiply it coordinate by a constant, I can see the x is it's equal to each other. So, the lambda x, lambda y, and lambda z equal to other on this set where lambda is anything belong to Q remove the, the zero. So again, B2 cos Q actually, the, the collection of points exactly the Q3 except the fact that I can see the, where this point, if you take arbitrary the point X, Y, and Z and another one, you multiply it coordinate by a constant lambda where lambda is non-zero. I can see this one actually identical because right now we talk about the tree line there. So it different by constant doesn't mean anything. For example, let me write out for you. So if we have the point say the x, y, z equal to the uh, one, two, and four, and the other one is x, uh, this one x0, x1, y1, z1, equal to 2, 4, and a. So in Q3, you see is those one belong to Q3 because they have three coordinates. They can look at different points. But when I embed uh, those points into the new set, B2Q, I can see they're the same thing. So actually here, it's different from 
one, two, and four on the Q tree. But the point here, the Q4 and A equal to here, you see uh, one modulate two, 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 and two, four. Actually identical with the one, two, four. B2 Q. The simple reason because uh, when you draw the picture here, and when you draw the, I mean, the, the normal set, it's just the plan that is one. But when you talk about the rejective space, every point on the same line, they can see the actually, it's just one big point here. Right? Because if different by constant, that means they lie in the, the same line here. So the Q3 is somewhere here. But through the transformation, you got the B2Q, which is every single line become a just single point. And then you have another line here. Again, the whole point in the line here, they merge in only different points as well. And you have separate dots. Yeah? So every, every point in the projective space is an equivalence class? Exactly, yeah. So. From the original equation, you have a new way to define uh, for three variables with the homogeneous polynomial. If you work over rejective space, so now is the a new way to define curve for uh, rejective curve, which is almost equivalent to this one there. Okay. It's not very much different except uh, uh, the consideration at infinity. So now it's uh, my curve. A curve uh, in B2Q is of the form the F, X, Y, and Z. But now I need to retreat the point will become more special, I call it homogeneous, where f, x, y, z is polynomial of three variables. And this one requires actually homogeneous. That means if you multiply it coordinate by a, a constant, they take out the whole constant out with the raised to the power of degree of f. So we have f lambda x, lambda y, and the z x is equal to lambda degree of f and multiply with f, y, z by. And here lambda is anything. I mean different from zero. For any lambda actually from q and it's not zero. Okay. So and again this one and that one there is very similar actually almost equivalent itself at behavior at infinity. I will, I will mention why it's different when I talk about the curve. So now, come back to the, again, the first example. So we have, uh, we defy to see how the form is x squared plus y squared equals z squared. So this one actually is exactly is the uh, uh, a circle before we have. If, for example, if you check, for example, if when z is non-zero, you divide both sides for z squared, you will have the equation here become x over z squared plus y over z squared equal one there, right? And then you can change your new variable, which is this one become very capital X, and here become capital Y, then this whole equation to become the X square plus Y square equal one there. And for those is the, uh, for those when Z equals zero, if you only can see the rational point, then it's very easy to solve. Basically, you only have the point to your actually X and Y equal zero, right? So let me point out. So 
So if when is the, the z equals zero, then the equation of c become uh, only the point x squared equal y squared equals zero. And because we're only interested in the directional point, that means a set of rational solution to this equation. Here you can imply right away actually x, y just equals zero. So again, if you can see the directional point, then the original curve before, if I know here, C0. Q actually. Uh, union. Also the same as C over Q. Except the point x, y equals Z equals zero. Because every other point you have here just by check the map. So for number theory consideration, actually, you can consider both for projective equation or apply equation. Any question? So How long I have? Okay. Left? Oh. So, if you have, now we start with the, uh, uh, again, with the equation of the curve, where I have the, uh, I come back to my phi equation before. And this one defines the whole thing here over Q. And because Q is a subset of, of C, where C here is just a complex number. And that means you can actually consider C is a curve over C as well. So using this embedding between the two sets, you can consider C as a curve in C. The reason is, they have many nice things. Well, if you consider this curve over C, one thing is if you already study object algebra, this one actually algebra close. So, Few. That means in principle you can find all the, the complex point on this equation because for any polynomial with the coefficient from C, you can find all the zero with the I mean the zero uh, solution from, from C as well. And the second thing nice about consider curve over C is you actually have uh, one theorem from complex analysis. Uh, if you consider curve of C in this form, then you actually have this a bijective map. I mean, all more bijective, but I really don't care about. I just go informal. So, where you have something from the F is the map, and the X go with the C here. Where the x here is some complex suffix, actually. So the complex uh, suffix that means some suffix with again defy over the complex the complex number. And uh, the reason why we care about this map because it tells you one very important invariant. So from here, for every every suffix, you can have the one invariant they call genus. Right, for example, if uh, you have P here, uh, well, so the fear have no hole inside. So the genus should be equal zero. And then I have another thing. If you have one hole, then the genus become one and so on. So, here we have, for example, the donut. And where he is, this one is the uh, suffix. They have a, a hole inside here. So this one, give me the genus one suffix. This one just the biology thing. And if you keep going, I have, uh, This one here, 
where you can find actually here have two holes. So it gives me the Tina two suffix. And the invariant called Tina for the suffix here, you can translate rule uh, rule this map here, go for C. And over C actually it becomes invariant again. So it's it's unique for its C. Right. So that means I have something called uh, the Tina's of C actually is defined by equal to the genus of the complex suffix exhaustic to C. And here because we have some uh, very beautiful math here. So again, this invariant translate to here become invariant again. And for separate curve, even though you see this map actually in terror very difficult to define, but for separate curve, when you channel it back to the curve, it's actually it's very easy to compute Tina for many, many curves. So let me give you a few examples. So what exactly is this X here? This is a subcomplex surface? It's a Riemann surface. Oh. Yeah. But I don't okay. I avoid or yeah. Yeah. So I have one dimension over C, right? Because Riemann, so that means it have two dimensions over real. That's why you have the the Tina's come. Some kind of arithmetic curves or something? No, it's a big chance. I change over C already. I need to have over C. I start with the C over, over Q, then I may change the C, become the, the curve of Q, the C. That's the way I can get this map. It's actually a holomorphic map. Uh -huh. And by check this, over if you remove the singularity of C, that's why I say here, it's very, not very precise. Yeah. Yeah. But if you look at the, 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 the smooth curve, then indeed, actually, it gives you a bijective map, yeah. yeah. So the first one, something called the uh, hyperelliptic curve. And you can see the root name is, just, they call it here hyper, that means even better than the elliptic curve. Actually, in general, it's more difficult to solve. So they have the form is no curve, but deficient have the form uh, c is defined by z square. Let me go with the y then. Y square equal to f of x because we already have one variable. So the right hand side is separate. It only have one point in f and half degree is the uh, alpha n, 2n plus 2, 2n plus 2, alpha of 2n plus 1, x 2n plus 1, and so on when you get to alpha 1, x plus alpha 0, where the alpha here belong to q, and alpha 2n plus 2 is 1, 0. And the third condition actually is crucial for my uh, statement of the genus here is that the fx has exactly 2n plus 2 complex roots. I mean, I'm sorry, this thing. That means if you already study object algebra, that means fx is actually separable. So the condition for f acceptable is just make sure that you kill every singularity of the curve. So then for those curve, uh, and if the curve actually one of them. So that's the first form for the hyperelliptic curve. This one let me put here number one. And number two, it's very similar. So if C can define using the y square of alpha 2n plus 1, x 2n plus 1, and I go the same way of the other one, I have f one x plus alpha 0 with every condition here, we're enough here. Okay. That means the alpha 2n plus 1 is non-zero, and the polynomial here is separate, which is half exactly. 2n plus 1, distinct complex root. So then it's the Tina right now, it's actually, you can compute actually very easy. It just n itself. 
So like I said, even though the equation look complex, like this form, and you don't go through the much trouble using the, the math before I define, you have another way to do it is actually, and then after compute, after commutation, you have actually the chief for this curve of this form, or this form, it is n, the little n there. For example, <coughs> If you define by, uh, say, y square equal x three plus uh, minus one. Uh, so the x three minus one, you actually can prove that they uh, have tweaked this thing come like root, right? Because equal zero where you have x equal one, all the other equation x square plus x plus one equal zero. But this one have two different roots. I uh, completely distinct from one. So that proved that the x three minus one here had three distinct come like roots. Okay. So now is the I couldn't write this form. I write it in the same form. But I change the the power a little bit become act multiply 2, 1 plus 1, minus 1. So that means the equation of my curve right now, the C here, had the form of the second form, where uh, if I translate between this form and that form, that means n is just equal 1. Because they have here 2 times n plus 1 there. So that means the genus of C actually is one. And in number theory, those curve of the chain is one and had this form, it's actually it's highly interesting because they, they actually using them you can deal with a lot of beautiful consequences. For example, in fact my last theorem actually come from Docker as well. So in general, you can defy the electric curve using the second form there actually. So this one is a definition for electric curve here. So an electric curve over Q is defined by E here. And they have y square, it's just x cubed plus alpha x plus beta. Where alpha and beta, I can check in Q such that the equation x cubed plus alpha x plus beta uh, equals zero. This is exactly three this thing. Complex roots. So that's the axis. That's a that's the elliptic curve. And on the pictures, if you only draw by the the real part of elliptic curve, somehow it's had this form. So that's just a, the real part of. Elliptic curve. And one interesting thing about it occurs because actually, when you look at the directional point, they actually have a structure. It's very different from the other curve. So even any electric curve like that form, and you can see the, the set uh, E of Q here. In my again here is just a, a set of rational point x, y on e. So this one actually uh, by model he proved first for the best of case for the curve later actually they he proved for something is more general. Then the electrical economy by a billion variety. 
is E of Q here actually is an abelian group. Abelian group that means it's a similar to <coughs> to Z. Actually. It's like you can add them together and they can build. If you have two points uh, from the E Q, then you can compute each other. That means they have addition of the uh, on elliptic curve. Okay. Any questions so far? Oh uh, yeah, they have addiction between them. So, uh, so come back to your life functors. One of the problems in his book, I don't remember exactly what book, I think probably the book six. In the Arithmetica book of his, he stated uh, the problem is uh, phi one fractional point on the curve, say y squared equal x6 plus x squared plus one. So the interesting thing here is, this, I mean, this one, like, he lived in third century, but this one here is, if you write out the x6 become x to the 2 times 2 plus 2 plus x squared plus 1, then remember the first form of hyperelliptic curve, this one gives you actually the genus. If we write out here, c is equal to there. Okay. And the more interesting thing is, if you change the question of diaphragm thus, it's not only phi, the one rational point, because phi one is very easy, right? You can look at the uh, x equals zero, and y equals one, then you have one. You see, when you plug in x equals zero here, on the right hand side equal one, and left hand side just one square, which is one as well. It's not the phi, the equation. But if you change the question by phi of them, on C. That means uh, the equivalent question should be what is the uh, C Q here? I mean you find every single point of the set of rational point of, of C there then it becomes a very difficult question and it's not solved recently until recently. So the one who completely find all of them is a Joe very real. In his thesis uh, at Berkeley, actually. Uh, I don't remember when he wrote it, probably 1997, I think. So in his thesis, he gave a very high technique. He calls the uh, Sabuti. This one actually very, very difficult technique in the uh, in arithmetic geometry or number theory. You kind of uh, what he do is what he map this curve into two elliptic curve, and then he analyze the set of rational points of the curve, and he translate back to the original curve here to find all of them, which is it's actually very difficult to find at the end, and he find all of them successfully. <coughs> So my main point here is what? Even sometimes the, the question look very simply stated in like this form. I mean, it's indeed very sim a very simple statement. But it's checked like from this one, third century, up to the time where very wrote a thesis is in the 20th century, which is checked like 17th century to solve. So it, it's too much for uh, such equation. And in general, up to now, uh, we don't know how to solve X. Uh, no, no. Method for finding all the direction of point on 
uh, curve of genus, at least one. The genus zero actually is easy, it's quadratic form. So you have some way to do, but I'm not mentioning that either. But the, the only positive thing is, in 1983, so Fultons, he's, uh, he's German. He won a few medals for this work. He proved that for any curve of genus bigger than or equal to two, they are only finding many points. Maybe you name this curve C here. But the thing is, they said how many, but how many we don't know. And for some curve, we cannot even decide actually exactly how many number of points there. How much can I have left? 10 minutes? Yeah. So, for example, uh, let me write out this example, and then we can go to ABC. Uh, the curve. The famous curve, actually probably the most famous one. So Fekmar curve had the form as xn plus yn equals z and yn bigger than 3. The two were actually just the Pythagorean theorem, this EV you saw as well. And actually we just solved it in for this example. So Fekmar, uh, Last theorem state that uh, the only point on C uh, or is actually no point. So of course you have zero, zero, zero. It's easy. Both zero and this one zero. And if you have eight of them one and the other one is one, or minus one zero, or is it minus one zero, or you can change it zero. Plus one to one, and plus and minus one. Right. So that's the only point they have, and it takes like more than I mean almost 400 years to nail down the, the proof. Until uh, every while in 1995, so he proved that. So it takes forever. And the genus of this curve actually is very. So I have a genus here actually. And it's different curve. Okay? This one is a homogeneous curve. Different way to do. So if C actually equal to n minus 1 divided by 2 there. Uh, hold on. 4, 2, yeah. I think so. So, uh, again, if you, if you, I mean, in your free time, you can change here for example, 10, 17, I mean, 20, whatever here. I think it's still very difficult to solve. We don't know in general. If you just put here A, B, C in front, or A, B, C, you ran over, whatever integer you like, and we don't know. We never know, actually, don't know when we know. So sometimes, like the question like FACMA, it took too much time to solve, then people tend to think different ways to get the solution by making some very strong conjecture. And one of them actually is ABC conjecture. And if you're using ABC, actually you can imply the FACMA last name only like a few lines. That's an amazing thing. And actually this one, they did you actually a bunch of a large number of very difficult question. So it's name of few. It's the first one, of course, is a fact mark one. Then the second one, you can take a look in some book. It's just called Catalan Conjecture. I don't have time to go to it, but hopefully I can talk about the fact mark one. So the statement of ABC is actually very simple. Uh, they have two forms. The strong form 
state is the, if you check any epsilon bigger than zero, the uh, a positive number. By positive number, I mean any epsilon is small enough, like one half, whatever you like. Okay. Then there it says another constant. And I name this one as the uh, C of epsilon. The reason why I put epsilon in, inside a parenthesis because it means it depends on, on epsilon. It epsilon gives you different constant. Such <coughs> if A, B, C, that's where the name comes from. Uh, A, B, C can check that. Or a positive integers. Uh, and A, B, C are uh, co-prime. You know what I mean by co-prime, right? That means you don't have the common divisor for any two of them. Uh, such that A plus B equals C, then C is actually expect you less than or equal the C of epsilon multiply something called practical of A, B, C, 1 plus epsilon. And I haven't defined radical yet, i aware. Uh, but here's the definition, very simple as well. The radical is just the, uh, so any, even any n is a positive integers, right? So you only can write out n actually the product of p1 alpha 1 up to pm alpha m. This is a fundamental theorem of arithmetic where the pi here actually a prime and the alpha i it belongs to the positive integers, and I want you to require here just the pi actually, this thing prime here. Then the radical of n, I don't, I don't care about the power because that's not interesting enough. So the radical, that means I only look at the product of all this thing prime, which is the uh, divisor of n. Here we have just b1, b2, up to the pm there. All right. So that means, for example, if n uh, is 100, that means it's going to become 2 squared and 4, 25, so 5 squared. Yeah. That means here you have 2 prime of 2 and 5, so the radical of n actually equals 2 times 5, which is 10. So ABC, that means as long as you have the relationship between a plus B equals C. And I'm, I really want to assure you that in number theory, this equation is really, really difficult. It looks very simple, but it's highly difficult. Then you can tell the difference between C and the number of uh, They never can pass by this constant here, where you write the power to the one, but epsilon. Epsilon aperture is small. So, uh, how many minutes do I have? No? A? Four. Four? Okay. Because I want to do that one for fact mala still. And you see, actually, very easy. It's very elementary, actually. One you know that can check. So this one is strong form. The reason why you call it strong form is because you need to satisfy every epsilon bigger than zero. But the form I, I like, just enough to deal with that mark one. And people actually check that. In this case, the C of epsilon actually equal one as well. That means it's back. Then the C actually let them equal to the PC square because one blood epsilon. So that's enough for us. And this one we call very weak form. So only correct one, 
one value of epsilon. So now we see is the uh, now I assume is the x, y, and z are positive integers such that y n x n equals z n. Of course, n only the number three there, and it looks horrible here. But I contend he become a, he become b, and he become c. That means they have a plus b equals c there, right? So then I calculate. And I can prove that actually, I only interested in the solution where A, B, C are co prime. The other one easy to deal from those solution. Then they have the first relation. So that means the only thing I need to calculate right now is just the uh, uh, if I yield the A, B, C conjecture. So A, B, C conjecture tell me the weak form is, you see there, it should be you know, the radical of A, B, C and square. Right. And now I come back to and here I'm plugging back the xn, uh, y and z n. That means I group together I have x, y, z to the n squared. There. But now you like that when I have the the form of n it just equal to a bundle power of a prime multiplied together. I don't care the power. It's always come back become the product of this thing prime without the power. Right. So that means this one here actually equal to the radical of xy square x. Because power doesn't matter. When you multiply with prime, you take away after anyway. And you can prove that and actually come directly from definition. This one less than x square, y square, z square. Right. Because this one, it did, it's just less than or equal x, y, and z. So when you square up outside, you less than x square, y square, z square. Now, you give a very simple uh, form this equation. You give the cool C1 and cool C inequality. And the cool is easy yourself is the Zn here equal to the product, uh, I mean, the sum here. And this one always bigger than or equal to two and x of n half y n half. And which is, because here 2 is positive, so it's bigger than x n half y n half. So that means, in general, you can prove that the here equivalent to say z squared bigger than x y. Because you just check the n over 2 root both sides. You get back to this form. And then, now, I use this one. I know this one is less than x, y, less than z squared. That means x squared, y squared, less than z to the 4. So this one less than z to the 4 multiply z squared, which is z to the 6. So, so far, what I prove is what? Zn less than equal, bound up dumb. And at the event, that means the n needs to be strictly less than 6. So from there, I have the Zn less than Z6. And because Z is positive integers, this equivalent to say N less than 6. And because N less than 6 and positive integer, that means N become 3, 4, and 5. But those cases we know a long time ago. The first case is due to Euler. The second case is due to Fekmar himself. And the third case due to digitally and the other one through the same time is Lysander. So, so far, exactly, you see only a few right. I start from here, I do ABC, I get back to the three known cases, and the fact my last thing follow. So that means ABC is super strong, because if you look at another proof of the Malice theorem using the elliptic curve by Andrew Y, it's like 100 something pages, technically, actually. So, and they have another, uh, it's consequent very beautiful as well. And it's similar to proof, but I run out of time. And you can, I mean, you like, you can look at the book by uh, Bombieri and Gupla. Probably, I don't know if this name is right or not, it's called High in Difunction Geometry. It's a beautiful book. And they contain several, I mean, consequences of uh, ABC conjecture. And I took it from 
the bye 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 grand deal. And I think Tucker. You can search online, I think it's probably online. It's very short proof. And ABC also implied uh, the fault in theorem I just stated some time ago. So, and the proof of uh, the implication between ABC 214 is due to knowing Elke. You can, I mean, you can take a look in his website as well. They, they're probably there. So, any question? Yeah? Which one? Uh, high, high in the dye function geometry. Oh, okay. The high, yeah. It's like, yeah. it's actually one episode of, of dye function geometry. They want to measure how, how high the point. Yeah, so. Yeah. Question? Any question? So I expect you, uh, I mean, to see several applications in uh, Jacob Stick stuff. And one interesting thing is uh, 2012, uh, one Japanese mathematician name is uh, Shinichi Mochiyuki. He claimed that he had a proof for the ABC conjecture. And the proof contained like several thousand pages. Yeah, but we haven't verified if it's, uh, the proof is correct or not up to now. Thank the speaker. There's a lot of questions there. Everybody is welcome. Well, for a round, 12.2.